Heavenly Father, as we begin this morning in this time period of a pandemic that's sweeping the world, uh, a panic that's sweeping the world, an oil crisis that's confronting the world, and who knows what's coming around the corner, we ask that you grant us the presence of your Holy Spirit. It is clear that you are plowing the Levites at this time. You have closed down the Adventist church um, through this providential leading. You've put fear in the hearts of men where they're going to begin to look and consider things. And we're trusting that your Holy Spirit is guiding those with honest hearts to this very message and the, the voices around planet Earth that are proclaiming this message, that they might begin to grapple with the implications of July 18th and then make the right choice um, when that event takes place. And we thank you for allowing us to see your hand in these things. We ask a blessing upon this study this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. I mean, you think about it. <clears throat> we'll deal with March 27th probably tomorrow um, in terms of it being a chiastic structure, 2019, 2020, and 2021, and that it being a symbol of 273 of the Levites. But the Adventist church begins 100 days of prayer on Sabbath, March 27th, because of the coronavirus. So they're calling a worldwide prayer session for a hundred days. They're closing down their churches so no one's going to churches. Those honest hearts are going to be looking at this and praying. You can see the Lord has every opportunity now to arouse the honest hearts right on time. Um, and you can see that March 27th is a symbol of 273, which is a symbol of the Levites. So. Um, I hope that everyone got a copy of the King of the South on Sabbath, and uh, if not, it's over there, and has read through it. Um, this isn't complete, but there was a discussion, a brief discussion on the chat, and I took some time to write this response, and I'm going to use this as a point of reference when we get back into the story of the King of the South. Um, but the notes today are the ones that are 220, 46, and 3. That's the, the title on them. Do you not have notes over there? Um, <clears throat> this is a follow-up of the Sabbath sermon to place an emphasis on the reliability of... Uh, are you getting your mother one? Oh, she's got them. 220, 46, and 3 on the reliability of chronology, dates, numbers. And so we have John 2.20 there to start with. Then said the Jews, Forty and six years was this temple in building, and wilt thou rear it up in three days? No. Um, so you have three numbers in there that You have three numbers in there that, that need to be factored in together. 46 years, and Jesus talking about destroy his body temple, and in three days it'll raise it, it'll, he'll raise it up. But the Jews are thinking he's talking about Herod's temple, which took 46 years. And if you go into history, um, Herod began his remodeling. And when did his remodeling finish? <coughs> When did Herod's remodeling of the temple end, according to the historians? In 27 A.D. What happened in 27 A.D.? Christ was baptized, and what did he do uh, immediately thereafter? He went, he went to the wilderness, but when he came out of the wilderness, then what did he do? You guys are mumbling like you're not real certain. What he did is in John 2.20, he cleansed the temple the first time. And it's because he cleansed the temple that he has this conversation. Go to John chapter 2. You shouldn't, 
you can't leave that out of the story if you're going to be clear about John chapter 2. And I'm saying that because this discussion of cleansing the temple um, following, or this discussion of destroying the temple and building it up following the cleansing of the temple, we're going to claim that the Millerite temple was built from 1798 to 1844 in 46 years. But October 22nd, 1844 is the conclusion of what? A temple cleansing. Okay, so when you get to year 46, where, wherever it's illustrated, you're going to have two classes manifested. Yes? Everyone with me? Okay, so in John chapter 2, in the, in the beginning you have a marriage. And then uh, in verse 13 it says, And the Jews' Passover was at hand, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem and found in the temple those that sold sold oxen and sheep and doves and the changers of money setting. And when he had made a scourge of small cords, he drove them out of the temple and the sheep and the oxen and poured out the changers' money and overthrew the temple tables and said unto them that sold doves, Take these things hence, make not my father's house a house of merchandise. And by the end of his ministry... He's going to cleanse the temple again, and in that history, at the end, what does he say about that house? My house Your house is left unto you desolate. He's separating from that house there. But here, it's, you've made my father's house a house of merchandise. And disciples remembered that it was written, the zeal of thine house has eaten me up. So, he cleanses the temple, and then his disciples quote from the scriptures that the zeal of thine house has eaten thee up. What is that? Okay, that is, what is zeal? Jealousy. jealousy. Okay, Brother Daniel has been dealing with jealousy in Deuteronomy 32 in depth. What is what it, where in which commandment is God's character identified? The second. the second commandment. And what is the summation of his character? Jealousy. He's a jealous God, visiting the iniquity unto the third and fourth generation. So when he's bringing judgment on that final generation, the third and fourth generation, it's at the cleansing of the temple. Right? He cleanses the temple in that final generation. Okay, so this is all connected. And who is it in the scriptures that gives an illustration of the jealousy of God? There's one that Brother Daniel should know of right off the top. There's only a few illustrations. One is Christ. Christ is giving a demonstration of God's jealousy. He's cleansing the temple. Who's another one? Are you thinking of Moses? No, Phineas. Phineas. Oh, yeah, Phineas. Yeah. And when does Phineas do this manifestation? And there's that, the two, Zimri and Christ. Yeah, right at the end. Okay, that's a temple cleansing. There's a division of the two classes. So you, you, gotta, you have to see that in here that you can't just get to the 46th year of the temple and, and not see that the two classes and God's judgment on the third and fourth generation is taking place at that time, right? And Elijah twice says, I have been jealous for thee. Okay, when, when he's talking to the Lord after he's ran away from Jezebel, I believe, after Carmel, okay? What took place at Carmel? Temple cleansing. And, and, and Elijah says, I was jealous for you. And I think there might be one other illustration, a human illustration of jealousy there. Um, so, and So I'm saying that when we got to September 7th, November 9th, um, we were at the temple cleansing time period when the judgment on the third and fourth generation is about to take place and he's about ready to finish the building of his temple, which takes 46 years. And the temple, 46 chromosomes, 46 years to build Herod's temple. Um, how long was Moses on the mount? I have this scripture in here to get the instructions for building the temple. 46, 46 days. And uh, 
while he was on the mount receiving those instructions, what, what was his brother doing? Building a golden calf, okay? Two classes developed. And what's he received? And on how many tables? Two. How many commandments on the first table? Four. How many on the second? Six. Six. Symbol of 46. Typifying what? These two tables. Okay, so this is, this is present truth for us. And so, in verse 18, after the Jews quote Psalm 69.9, or refer to Psalm 69.9, Then answered the Jews and said unto him, What sign showest thou unto us, seeing that thou doest these things? Jesus answered and said unto them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Then said the Jews, Forty and six years was this temple in building, and wilt thou rear it up in three days? Um, so that verse is 220. Okay, and that verse has in it the number 46 and the number 3. And with that, you, you can do some mathematical things we're going to look at. But in your notes there, under witness of nature, Part of what I'm doing here, because most of this number thing that we're dealing with here, we've already did in the past, is I'm trying to demonstrate that our confidence in the chronology and the dates that are in these time patterns that are taking place is based upon the same prophetic methodology and application that we've done since 1989. Upon the testimony of two, a thing is established uh, line upon line, and that's how we're seeing these things going by the weight of evidence. And when it comes to a second witness, one of the second witnesses that you can use is the witness of God's second book, which is the witness of nature. And Sister White refers to this second book often, but I just have it from here, from the Acts of the Apostle, 571. It says, In his isolated home, John was able to study more closely than ever before the manifestations of divine power as recorded in the book of nature and in the pages of inspiration. So, John is quarantined. Now the Lord can speak to him. Adventism has been quarantined as of March 27th. And they've corporately said, we're having a hundred days of prayer to wrap our minds around this pandemic. And this ministry identified this pandemic was coming January 14th, 2017. Yes? In a sense, you could say that Adventism should have self-quarantined a long time ago. What I mean by that is cease public evangelism. Now they're being forced to stop. Yeah, they're being forced to stop public evangelism and they're in a place where they're on a lonely desert isle and if they have an honest heart, the Lord can speak to them. To him, it was a delight to meditate upon the work of creation and to adore, adore the divine architect. That's What's what, your March 26th date? 27th. Well, what, where are you getting that from? That that's when they stopped? Because they stopped a couple weeks back. They could, I'm saying they may have stopped a couple of weeks back, but they proclaimed on March 27th, 100 days of prayer. Okay, that's their official point. Yes, okay, and, and Theodore Turner, when we first began to see November 9th, back in October of 2018, um, he recognized a structure in those lines that identified March 27th, 2019. He knew it was there, but he, no one was quite sure exactly what it meant. And then we realized that in the line of 777, does everyone know the line of 777? It begins on November 9th, 2019 and goes to December 25th, 2021. In those 777 days, if you start on November 9th, you go 252 days and it takes you to July 18th, 2020. 
and it leaves 525 days till December 25th, 2021. But if you use July 18th as the focal point of a chiastic structure, then you have 252 days from November 9th to July 18th, and another 252 days takes you to, I don't remember off the top of my head what the date is, okay? But it, you go 252 days, and what it leaves you is 273 days until December 25th, okay? And 273, I, I wasn't going to go here till tomorrow at the earliest, and I'm not going to go here, but I, I need to let you see this structure, particularly since I don't remember the, the first date. This is 11-9. 2019-11-9. This is 7-18-2020. Uh, and this is 252 days. And this is 525 days to December 25th, 2021. We've, we've spoke about this. This is the 777 days. Okay, this is a Sabbath, this is a Sabbath, this is a Sabbath. But if you're going to treat from here to somewhere in here as a chiastic structure and go to 252, if anyone knows this date, help me out. I just don't have that off the top of my head, nor do I have it with my notes. From July 18th, you go 252 days, and what you're doing is you're creating a chiasm here from November 9th to here. And what this is... When you take 252 from 525, it's 273. And 273 has been identified as a symbol of the Levites. Okay, so in here we're seeing the Levites come in, leading up to the Sunday law here. But March. Oh, that was the acts that part? March 27th, 20. This is March 27th? 2021. Okay, so this is, this is the point. I, I thought it was, but I wasn't going to say it and get in trouble. Okay, 2021. This is March 27th again. Okay. So there's a March 27th here. Different structure. Don't, don't let me get you too confused. This is March 22nd, 27th. And Theodore has already noted in, a, in another structure back here, March... 27th, 2019, and the very center of this chiastic structure that begins with March 27th and ends with March 27th is March 27th, which is 327, 2020, and March 27th is a symbol of 273. You see the 327, 327, and it leads you to this period of 273. 273 being a symbol of the Nethanims. You follow me? Okay. I, what happened on... Here. Is, yeah. Okay, here, in or, that's why I wasn't going to explain it. In order to, to address this one, we have to get we have to go all the way back to the Italian camp meeting and bring the 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 way marks from the Italian camp meeting to here and in that line with those structures you can show that March 27th pops up in one of the chiasms and when Theodore first saw that he had no idea I don't think I'm pretty sure he no one had any idea of what it represented and it just sat there hanging in the balances okay but then they begin to see that this was March 27th, and March 27th, 327, is 273. Okay, so this is one of those way marks where the date is followed by the expression of the number. Okay, you've got 273 here and 273 days until here. Okay, so, so now here. What the, assuming this is a symbol of the Levites, and it is, on March 27th, the Adventist Church has called for a hundred days of prayer concerning, concerning this pandemic. This, we understand from chiasms, 
What is this? This is the most important point in a chiasm, the center. Okay, this is the cross, this is, this is the center. So whatever the characteristics are in the center are going to speak to the beginning and the end. Okay, the end we can see it speaking to the Levites, and the Levites are Seventh-day Adventists. It says that, that, that those dates go two weeks before July 18th. And the, that's what he said. Is, is What are you talking about? When he was talking yesterday on... Yeah, I don't want to get into that level. I don't... I, 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 that, and, and he doesn't have it in my mind well explained either. I don't want to clutter it up. This here, this chiastic structure, this here you can see 273, the Levites being emphasized, but here, the fact that the Adventist church is called for 100 days in prayer, it's putting the context of this chiasm into the Levites. Okay, the Levites are now being seriously plowed in our old terminology. But I wasn't going to do that till tomorrow. But yes, Kathy's right. In Theodore's presentation, which is on YouTube, that was where you there's, didn't have really any significance. There's other, there's other way marks there. But I'm not trying to throw those in because I don't fully understand them and I think simplicity is better first time around anyway. So we're going to take this that you just laid out here and we're going to come back to it and try to put some meaning in it because right now I'm just seeing a, a, re a repeating pattern. I don't understand the meaning of it. Other than you can recognize a pattern. Okay, so you can recognize a pattern. Yeah. Can you recognize a chiastic structure? Okay. Yeah. Can, yes, can you? Yeah. Okay, and do you recognize that it is a chiastic structure that is speaking about the Levites? I don't remember all the reasons why 273 is the Levites. But Acts 27. Right. I thought in this room you would know it better than most. Yeah, Acts 27. Yeah. How many people get on the boat? Yeah, I know. How many people get on the boat? 276. 276, right? Yeah, yeah. But. And, now, now that's my point. The but. That is my point. Is your, you knew that from what Tess taught. And now you know that Tess is a representative for, representative for Satan. Representative of the Pope of Rome. So you, you're correctly saying, I, I want to back away from all that. My argument is this. Some of these false teachings that Parminder and Tess have brought in were absolutely purposeful to an, an attempt to destroy an important truth. For instance, Parminder's prediction of a Sunday law in 2014. Okay, we were supposed to see 2014. It was important to see that 2014 was emphasizing October 22nd, 1844 and 1888. But it wasn't saying anything about a Sunday law. So Parminder comes in and he convinces people that there was a Sunday law in 2014 because there was no Sunday law in 2014. He makes 2014 all about a Sunday law that wasn't there. And at the same time, he's convincing people to accept this satanic logic that Yes, there was a Sunday law there, even though there wasn't any Sunday law that we can show you from history. And this movement has always been based upon Sister White saying, historical events were set before the people and prophecy was seen to be a figurative delineation of events leading down to the close of this earth's history. In order to establish a waymark, you had to have a historical event. And Parminder says, no, 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 there was no historical event, but there was a Sunday law there. And he was, he was conveying a a concept that was going to be reversed when he gets to the actual Sunday law that he really is going to take place, then he's going to say, no, the real historical event isn't going to happen. So 2014, Parminder leads out, he identifies 2014 before anyone else does because he wants to destroy it. Okay, and then our second witness to that technique we discussed just a minute ago. Tess comes out and says Donald Trump was in Russia on November 9th, 2013. And there he had some risque uh, encounter with prostitutes in Russia and he formed some kind of collusion with the Russians. And the fact of the matter is, is November 9th is, a, is connected with Donald Trump. 
Okay, he may have won the election on November 8th, but they didn't quit counting those votes till November 9th. And November 9th is when the United States was first seen by the, the pilgrims. So November 9th is, has to do with the United States. Trump gets in office November 9th, and Trump was in Russia on November 9th. And Tess comes into history teaching us that what he was doing is he was, he was interacting with prostitutes and forming some good relationship with Russia, even though Daniel 11 is going to say that Russia and the United States are in a struggle. She said, no, they come together. But what Trump was doing in Russia on November 9, 2013, is he was selecting Miss Universe. Okay, so he was typifying that he was the, the 45th and last president of the United States that was going to repeat Justinian's work because Justinian identifies the Pope of Rome as the head of the churches and the corrector of heretics. He was typifying by being selecting Miss Universe the work that he was going to do to select the papacy as the woman of the universe at the Sunday Law. What does Catholic mean? Universal. Yes. Catholic means universal. Miss Universe. And in the Bible, what, what does the papacy say of herself? I set a queen. That's her pronouncement. She's the queen. She's Miss Universe. Okay, so there's a second time where the Parmender test team took a legitimate waymark in advance of everyone else and purposely cluttered it. Hers is destroying our ability to see the Sunday law well. She's, she's switching the roles to prostitutes and a collusion between Russia when we were supposed to see that he's the guy that's going to place the papacy on the throne of the earth. So what I'm saying is that she also led out in Acts 27 to identify a distinction between those three. Paul, and what were the other two? Who were the other two guys? Aristica and Luke. Luke, Aristica, and Paul are the priests. And the 273 that are left on the ship are the Levites. And she puts that in place. Okay, she puts that in place, and it just hangs there. It hangs there. So, when we get to the point to where we're recognizing this history of 777, this is a Sabbath, this is a Sabbath, and this is a Sabbath. 777, and there's 777 days from November 9th to December 25th, 2021. This is the history of Trump, and we put that in the record, all the ways that Donald Trump connects with 777 or 77. 2021 is a Sabbath. Yeah, 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 I have it right there. No, the one over. This is a Sabbath also? Yeah. Okay, another Sabbath. But what this is, is if you're just looking at 777, it's 252 days to get you to this first Sabbath, and then it's 525 days to get you to this Sabbath, okay? But it was recognized by a chiastic structure that if you start here and go to here 252 days and then go 252 days later, it takes you to March 27th. And when that was recognized, then the lights clicked on. Here's a March 27th again, and Theodore had already recognized a March 27th down here. Okay, so this March 22nd and March 27th and this March 27th becomes a chiastic structure when we realize this March 27th and March 27th, the numerology of it is 273. It's Levites, it's Adventism, 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 Adventism. This is, this is the closing down from here to here of their ability to get ready because at the Sunday Law, it's all over for them. So, who's the target audience for the message of July 18th? Adventism. Adventism. Okay, so the Lord is opening up. This is, this is significant stuff. So the idea that before we even really seen this chiastic structure come into full clarity, that the Adventist church has shut down its churches, as would happen in the Sunday law crisis through the laws of the land, they've voluntarily shut down their churches because of the pandemic. But then on March 27th, they've called worldwide for 100 days of prayer. That 
that's, that's a historical event that can be set before the people and, and prophecy can be seen as a figurative delineation leading down to the close of this earth's history. It's valid and it's significant. He's, it's saying he is now putting Adventists in a position where those that are true in heart that are really going to seek the Lord because of this crisis through prayer, that He can answer Him. And He's going to lead those honest hearts to the few places around planet Earth where this message is being proclaimed. And this message, the reason they're having this hundred years, hundred days of prayer is because of a pandemic. And this ministry identified that there would be a pandemic January 14th, 2017. And I'm, I'm not saying that to lift us up. I'm saying that, that this is the story of Elijah. It's identifying who has the genuine prophetic message as opposed to the prophets of Baal, Parminder, and the priests of the grove, Tess. It's part of that story. He's, he's vindicating this message, and preparing the Levites. But uh, I, look, I spent my morning trying to find out what took place on March 27th, 2019. And I just, I don't know what it is. 14 or 19? That's a 19. Okay. That don't look like a 4, does it? And the, the, thing, the thing you want to do, if you got the way to count it, there's something that's just as profound about all this as anything else. Um, from this March 27th, the last one, to this one, if I recall right, this is the one I'm, I'm iffy about, this is a total of 731 days. But check me, and remember there's a leap year, I, and I, I asked Theodore on the email this morning before I left, but he hasn't got back to me. The point being is, what's 731? It's July 31st. And July 31st, isn't it July 31st? Okay, July 31st in the Julian is what in the Gregorian? 718. So the numbers of days of this chiastic structure is emphasizing this message. So it's pretty profound stuff. How many days is it from? 731 days. I, that was the part I didn't, I, I, I couldn't remember in my head and I emailed Theodore. It, it's something like this. It, it's a profound number that contributes to this message. Did, no one has the ability to... 731. 731. From July... I mean, uh, From March, March 27th, 27. 2019 okay. to March 27th, 2021 is 731 days. And 731 is July 31st. And July 31st in the Julian is July 18th in the Gregorian. So this chiastic structure is for Adventism and it is emphasizing July 18th. Right? Pretty profound stuff. Yeah, I hope I'm not kicking around, but remember, as Theodore always does, he has all kinds of other balls because Kathy was watching this last night too. He has other, other way marks in this stuff and I wasn't even going to try to learn those first time around. Well, I, the one that was insignificant to me when he, he, he looked at it, the audience, like as if it was profound and I thought two weeks before July 18th it brings you to I didn't understand what he meant by that. He didn't say. Okay. So did I f even finish this? No. Why? Did you interrupt me, Brahman? Okay. I'm this I'm saying the witness of date nature is God's second book. Okay, we're going there again, huh? Last last thing with the witness of nature is that their psychology today says that the fractals of nature cause a sixty percent reduction in stress 
um, when you consider fractals that are in nature, these repeating nature patterns, so it actually has a physical quality to it to consider fractals. And I put the article up if anybody wants What to does that mean? I have no idea what you just said. The, Say it loud. The nature, the nature has, they have built in fractals into the leaves, into the trees, and these repeating patterns, when you consider them, they can reduce people's stress by 60%, but when they isolate, what is actually reducing the stress, it's consideration of fractals, and they're calling it the fractal stress reduction. And you can find it online. Oh. Okay, look up fractal stress stress no, reduction. I mean, I that seems kind of new agey to no, me. No, I put it on the WhatsApp group. It's a scientific study that's been done. Well, we that fractals, teach fractals. You teach fractals, but anything that's true has a counterfeit. That's what we're dealing with here. We're, they're saying we're doing numerology and there's a counterfeit numerology. If there was ever a time for a fractal to put, to put in, it would be but nature. If I'm understanding you right, she's saying that all you have to do is consider that the pineapple is developed upon fractals and it will... That's, that's the, the counterfeit. Okay, so what's the truth? So psychology today, we know psychology is not a science that's approved of by God. So psychology today is recognizing that the consideration of fractals is reducing their patient's stress, but we know the true consideration of fractals is the consideration of nature, which this quote is doing, okay, all right. and these fractals, and it will reduce our, our stress in the correct way, I believe. I believe there's a property totally to agree. nature that's inherent in it, even without being a Christian. I totally agree. It's, it's, uh, be careful there. That's where John Harvey Kellogg got. <laughs> and when you get to Paneum, you're getting to pantheism. Oh. Um, I think what's significant about what he's saying two weeks before July 18th is, is it's 4th of July, Sabbath, 4th of July. Wow. Oh, it is? Oh, the country celebration. So it's 4th of July is exactly two weeks before the 18th, which would make, which, which would, is a big significant date for the United States. Oh, yeah, it is. Yeah. And, I mean, if we're going to go there off the top of our head, somewhere, oh, no, it, it's on July 4th, on that date, what's going to happen? What, what famous radio guy is going to have a gathering of evangelicals to pray for the country? Glenn Beck. Glenn Beck. Okay. So there's a movement, a Christian, although he's Mormon, and that, calling a Mormon a Christian is like calling a Catholic a Christian. Um, it's not really so, but there's a Christian movement on July 4th for this country. Been planned for months. Yeah. Two weeks before, but uh, anyway, we're so far off track here. So what I'm saying is, the number 46 in John 2.20 has a second witness to it with the book of nature, and here's, here's just off of Wikipedia, you can get it a lot of different ways, about the 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 cell types. F fetal stem cells are the cellular building blocks of the 220 cell types within the body. And so the 220 is expressed in John chapter 2 verse 20. And if you turn over to page 2, on the top of page 2 concerning the number 46, it says a gamete or gamete an ovum and a sperm, one from the female and one from the male. They unite to form a zygote, which is a fertilized ovum, hence bringing together 23 and 23. The ovum, ovum conti contributes 23... What are they? 23? Chromosomes. chromosomes. And the sperm contributes 23 chromosomes. And those 23 and 23 go together to make up a fertilized ovum or a temple. And it's, it's the, the fetal stem cells are the only ones that can reproduce other cells. Okay, so there is your, your point of reference for producing the 220. They're connected. And it, what I'm saying is on both of those numbers, 220 and 46, I don't want to miss this point, you have a second witness in nature. Go ahead. And the marriage came first in your John 2 representation. 
John 2 begins with the marriage. And they are not allowed to spill their seed, so you immediately have the building of this human, and then you have the cleansing of the temple, if you want to see it in Jewish. Yeah, and if you're still in John 2, it how does it begin in John 2, 1, which would be midnight, okay. at the third day? And do we see the third day in verse 20? Yeah. And in three days I will raise it up. Okay, destroy this temple three days. The third day, 46 years, and 220 are all there. There was a marriage um, on October 22nd, 1844. The 220 is marked. The 46 years is concluded in Millerite history. Was there a marriage on October 22nd, 1844? Yes, Christ entered into the marriage. And where did it take place? In Galilee. And what's Galilee? It's a turning point. Was there a turning point on October 22nd, 1844? Judgment began. Was there a turning point at 9-11? Judgment of the living began. So, verse 1... And there was the train gets all the way turned around by... Yeah, there's a turning point on... September 7th. Okay, there are lots of turning points. Alright, so back to page 1. This is going to be one of those days. Um, there's a mathematical witness to the 220. The, there are two things that come together on October 22nd, 1844. The 2520 and the 2300. The 2300 is Representing what? The central pillar of the host. Uh, okay, well, yeah, it could be, you probably have a lot of right answers, but what I was getting at, it's representing the, the, uh, why am I forgetting this? The 23 chromosomes. chromosomes. 2300. You got 23 chromosomes coming together there, but they got to come together with another 23 chromosomes. But are they coming together with 23 chromosomes? No, they're coming together with 252 chromosomes. Aren't they? Yeah. And what's the 252? It's, a, it's seven times. And seven times in the story of Christ is from 8027 to 8034. And in the middle is the cross in 8031 and you have a 1260 in there on both sides it, it, you can, the seven what I'm getting at is the seven it can represent the three and if it can represent the three the 252 can represent the seven can represent the three can represent the 23 the both of the 23's come together the one is different the 252 is different than the 23. Is the ovum different than the sperm? Yeah. yeah. One's male, one's female, but they're the same. Okay, so you have two things come together on October 22nd, 1844, but at the beginning of those two time prophecies, what do you have? This is old, re this is review. From 677 to 457, you have 220 years. Jesus illustrates the end from the beginning, so what do you have to have on October 22nd, 1844? You have to see a 220. Mm -hmm. And on October 22nd, Christ moved into the most holy place. October is the 10th month, 22nd day. What's 10 times 22? Yeah. 220. Now the next one, it works, but you need to know, don't just think it through without thinking it. The math is not valid in what I'm going to tell you here, but the, the symbolism is valid. Christ moved into the most holy place on the tenth day of the seventh month. So, how many days in a month? What's seven times thirty? Two ten. How many days in the tenth month? Tenth day. So two ten and ten is what? Two twenty. Is that math right? No, it works. no, it's not right. It symbolizes it. 
because it, actually the time is six full months would be 180 and it would be 10 days into the seventh month. It would be 190. But it's still, this, symbolically, it's representing 220 there. Um, the, those two witnesses, plus all the 220s in the Bible that identify what went on there. Okay, on the bottom of uh, the page one, it says 220 and 2300, Daniel 8.13. Um, I forget, I did, the, did this recently. This is the argument, in my mind, of Daniel 5, Matthew 16, and Daniel 8.13 that they're all witnessing the same thing. In Daniel 8.13, Palmoni introduces himself as the wonderful number or the number of secrets. And in the verse, he's talking about the sanctuary and the host being trodden down by paganism and papalism. So you have the treading down of the sanctuary, the treading down of the, sanct the temple. It's about the temple, about the destruction of the temple. And then in Daniel 5.25, you have Belshazzar has brought in the sacred vessels from the temple and the handwritings on the wall. Second witness to a temple story, but in that you have 5.25 encoded in the verse. And 5.25 is the inverse, is that the right word? No. Of 252. What is it? Is there, is there even a word that is used for that? Anyway, you know what I mean. Okay, so it's a new word. Um, 525 can be inverted to be 252. Okay, and we see 525 popping up in these lines right there. 273. Yeah, 252 and 273 is 525. But if you put a mirror underneath 525 and looked at it, what would you have? That, this would be nature. Okay, nature's a second witness. If you put a mirror under 525, what would you have? 252. Right? Amen. Okay, so the Daniel 5 is a second witness to Pamona. You're looking, you're looking like you don't follow me. If this is the mirror, why would it change the Okay, a mirror is going to be reversed. It still start with a 5 and No, when it, if you turn it upside down, Flip it upside down, a two's a five. Flip the five upside down, a five's a two. You did that. Yeah. Go ahead. A better way to explain your 327 to be a 273 would be to express it in the calendar format of the uh, Europeans, because they would say it's the 27th of the third mm -hmm. month. Then you get your 273. That's a better way to explain okay, it. Okay, if we do European. Of your. Of your then it would European be European date would be twenty seven twenty seven three. That's a better way to express it. But it's there. Okay, so Daniel five is a second witness to Palmoni, and then we went to Matthew sixteen eighteen with the verse that is five, where Peter is the hundred and forty four thousand and. Um, what, I, what I'm saying is, is that Daniel 8, 13, and 14, which is the central pillar of Adventism, is about the restoration of the temple. Um, Daniel 5, 25 is about the desecration of the temple. And in Matthew 16, 18, which is phi, Jesus says, Upon this rock will I build my temple, his church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And in Daniel 5, the gates of hell were fighting against it. It was Babylon. And in Daniel 8, 13, paganism and papalism were fighting against it. So the whole thought of these three passages is about the temple, and you see the wonderful number expressing himself in each of these places. So the number 220, it's... It's got a second witness in nature. The number 46 has a second witness in nature. And Jesus says, destroy this temple, and in three days I'll raise it up. Where's the second witness for the number three in nature? In nature. 
Go to the book of Genesis. And um, the, the third day, no, it'd be the sixth day. And it's in what verse are we looking for in Genesis? 126. Verse 126. What does verse 126 say? And what is 126? Okay, it says, And God said, Let us make man in our image, in our likeness. What likeness are we made in? God. And how many entities are in the Godhead? Three. Three. The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. So what is the second witness in nature to destroy this temple and in three days I'll raise it up? The number three is how we are of human beings are structured in the image of God as found in Genesis 1.26. Which this attack has been against the very foundation of that. It's come to attack that very foundation that we're made in the image of God. Oh, just, yes. Anyway, we were, I don't want to go That we're all that. the same. Okay, well, I don't want you to miss the point, though. Now, what we're doing now is we're saying that the numbers, the chronology, the dates that are occurring uh, are that we're accepting them based upon the same prophetic methodology that we've always used. And in, in John 2.20, we have three numbers we're looking at, 3, 46, and 2.20, and we've given you the witness of nature in all three of them. We've shown, shown you the context of John 2.20 is about what? The temple. Is, Dan, is Matthew 16.18 about the temple? Is Daniel 5.25 about the temple? And is it Daniel 8.13 about the temple? The, the theme of all these verses is the same theme, and you see the wonderful number in each of these places bringing forth light that is so profound it's, it's unbelievable. Um, so, what I'm saying is, we, we're, when we're putting our confidence on July 18th, we're using the same methodology that we began to use in 1989, line upon line, testimony of two or three, a thing is established, um, and so on, so forth. Okay, so another number here. I'll try to get through this in seven minutes because this is a review. I'm, I'm trying to finalize why we're having confidence on numbers, and by numbers I mean time patterns, chronology, and dates. And maybe some other thing. But in Revelation 9.15, under our day, month, and year, it says, And the four angels were loose, which were prepared for an hour, a day, and a month, and a year, for to slay the third part of men. This is the 391 year point five day time prophecy. Um, and I just have that in there to show those four types of time because I want to look at 1533 as a number. And why would I want to look at 1533 as a number? Because if you take John 2.20 and you divide 46, destroy this temple, and in 46, it, this temple was 46 years in the building, and I'm going to raise it up in three days. If you divide 46 by 3, yes? What do you get? You get 1533. All right, and it was in 1533 that you had the manifestation of the power of God that took place in the history of Moses and the Red Sea deliverance and the giving of the law. And in Patriarchs and Prophets, page 340, it says, Never since man was created had there been witnessed such a manifestation of divine power as when the law was proclaimed from Sinai. That took place in 1533. BC. And if you go into the chronologists on planet Earth, they're going to argue with you on that, but you can, vary, you can go to Theodore's website, I don't know if it's a website, academia.org, academia 
I forget what the next word is. You can connect with Theodore, he'll give you a paper, or you can download Stephen's presentation. Stephen's presentation on 1533 BC, if you follow along, he nails it. And he shows that all those other chronologists in the world are wrong. And it's, it's a really, really good presentation. Anyway, 1533 BC was the glory, the most profound manifestation of God's power that had taken place up until that time period. If you pass over where it says hour there, you can go to August 11th, 1840 to October 22nd, 1844. In Great Controversy 611, Sister White says, the angel who unites in the proclamation of the third angel's message is to lighten the whole earth with his glory. A work of worldwide extent and unwanted power is here foretold. The Advent movement of 1840 to 44 was a gl glorious manifestation of the power of God. Therefore, the Advent movement of 1840 to 1844 paralleled or was typified by the giving of the law at Sinai, which was a manifestation of divine power. And if you count the days from August 11th, 1840 to October 22nd, 1844, it was 1,533 days. Those are the days. 1533 is the year. Day, year, hour, month. Okay, if you go back to uh, back up now where it says 1533 equals 33 equals hour, what do I mean by that? If you take 1533 and you put it onto military time, what's military time? It's 1 through 24, okay? 1, 2, 3, all the way up to 24 being midnight. What is 15? 3. three. So 1533 on military time is 333. And what's 333 a symbol of? Third. A third. Um, and here you have the calculation 46 equals 1260. Does 46 equal 1260? Why would 46 that would e be John 2, 20. 46 years the temple was yeah. being built. Uh-huh. Christ says, you know, in three days, I'll build it up. The so, seven <coughs> chiastic structure in the middle gives you two twelve sixties. Uh, okay. So, week, right? so what's the three days? Three days. On either side of it. Yeah, well, I, I, like 46, 12, 60 days. How can 46 equal three days? Uh, you see the formula I have in your... Can you explain that? According to John 2.20, 40, 40 and 6 years was this temple in building, will thou build it up in three days? Okay, so why are you saying that it's 12.60? But, oh, oh, okay, I was thinking of three and a half. I don't know. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't know, but why, why are you saying that? Is, Is 12.60 a seven times? Yeah. It is? It's a 126. No, it, it, yeah, it is. It is. 126 is 1260 is 2520. Yeah. 2520? Uh, where do you prove, where's the simplest place to prove that a 1260 is a 2520? Yeah. Uh, for me, this is the simplest place. It's, Before. It's 126 garage, isn't it? Is this 2520? Mm -hmm. yeah. Prophetically, it's 2520 days from 27 AD to 34, right? Yeah. And this is 1260? And this is 1260. And I'm saying, I'm asking, how do we show that 1260 is 2520? And I'm saying this is the simplest place to show it. How do you show it here? Who is this about? Christ. What, confirming the covenant, but Christ on the cross is where the blood is shed to confirm the covenant. And he was the offering. And in this 1260 days, how many offerings were there? There was an evening and morning offering. So there was two times 1260, which was 2520 offering. Okay, but when you get to the 20, 2520 offering, when you get to the 200, 
2520th offering in this history, what happens to that lamb? He escapes. And who becomes the 2520th lamb of this history? Christ. Okay, so he's saying he's the 2520, but this 1260 day period is 2520. You follow the logic? So if 1260 is 2520, then 126 is 2520, and we know that 252 is 2520, and 63 is 2520. So if 1260 is the 2520, and it is, right? Yes? Yes. Then it's also 7. Yes. Right? Yes. Three and a half and three and a half. Yep. <coughs> okay, so the th it's 3. It's three. destroy this, pardon me? So you were asking why it's 3 days, but you can easily see 3 and a half, but the the three is hard, a little bit harder. Because in 46 and in three days we'll wear it out. Are there three days here at the beginning? Because there's three days here where they destroyed the temple at the cross and he's resurrected on the third day. Are there three days here? There's three days here, right? He's crucified, rests in the grave, and is resurrected on the third day. And that's what he was speaking about. Destroy this temple and in three days I'll raise it up. But this is a prophecy here. So he's going to illustrate the end from the beginning. Is there three days here? Shortly after he was baptized, he said, I would build his temple in three days. Okay, shortly after, he's been in, before that, he's at a, a on the third day, he's in a, a wedding. Yeah. But that isn't what I'm getting at. What was this? The triumphal No, no, what was this? His it's his baptism. What is the baptism? No, well, yeah, yeah, there's three there, but what is the baptism? Dude, come on now, you guys know what the baptism symbolizes, don't you? Yeah, the Holy Spirit. It represents this, the death and resurrection of Christ. You, the baptism is you are crucified with Christ, you go into the tomb of the water, and you're resurrected. Jesus illustrates the end from the beginning perfectly. He's saying this history is three, it's three, it's three. And the third person of the Godhead. Yeah, you got other witnesses, but in terms of the cross, this is the cross. Isn't it the cross? When you're baptized, isn't that what you're doing? You're repeating the history of these three days in one ceremony. And Christ did it here. To give us an example of what? Of this. So, the three is there. Also, the uh, 126 shekels. 126 shekels. Equals 2,520 garrets. And where do you get that from? From many, many temple you portion. Daniel 5, 25, and a lot of 25 to 20. Yeah, but it's expressed many, many temple you portion there in verse 25. Okay. Um, and, f okay, so from August, down to the bottom of your page, August 11th, 1840 to October 22nd, 1844 is 1,533 days. And what that opens up for us um, is, let's read it. I have Matthew 15.33, and it's supposed to be Mark. That's a typo. Go to Mark 15.33. We're not going to explore this. Stephen has done a nice job on this. It's available. And when the sixth, this is Mark 15, 33. Um, and when the sixth hour was come, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. And I'm going to read just a little bit further to make the point. Um, that's supposed to be Mark. 
and I want to read 1533 and then 34 through 38. In your notes, I have 33 all by itself, even though it's part of the same sequence of verses, because I want to note that 1533 is 1533. But in verse 44, it says, And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eloi, Eloi. What's that? That's a doubling. In fact, it's going to be a double doubling, because it's going to get translated, uh, Lama Sabak. Thani, which is being interpreted, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? So at the ninth hour, you're at the midnight cry. You got a double doubling, and you got a loud voice, a loud cry at the midnight cry. And verse 35, And some of them that stood by when they heard it said, Behold, he calleth Eliza, Elias. And one ran and filled a sponge full of vinegar and put it on a reed and gave him to drink, saying, Let, it, let alone, let us see whether Elias will come to take him down. And Jesus cried with a loud voice and gave up the ghost. And the veil of the temple was rent in twain from, top, from the top to the bottom. Close of probation. There's a close of probation that takes place there at the midnight cry. And there's people that don't understand what's going on. Um, and what do they want to feed Christ? Vinegar. Wine. The wine of Babylon. Vinegar. There's a doubling of the veil there, too. A doubling of the veil from twain in twain. Yeah, in two, from top to bottom. It ends in verse 38. But 1533 also a very profound number and uh, we'll leave it there because of time and I would ask those that are watching on live stream I assume we put this on the internet on Sabbath uh, the King of the South read that just so we're all focused in because now we're going to go into Daniel 11 and try to bring it all together um, and we'll probably start tomorrow with some connections how is it that Islam's connected with the United States and the United States with Russia and 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 how is it that the Omega movement is connected with the Pope of Rome and how they're connected with Putin um, those type of connections and uh, try to bring this to a conclusion in time for the Levites to begin focusing in on this message that's coming at blinding speed shall we pray Heavenly Father we Thank you that we are being allowed to participate in a work such as this at a time such as this. We ask that you give us the discernment to rightly divide the word of truth, uh, the ability to rightly present it, and that you would bless the work that we're doing here. We know that uh, we are down to a number that allows us to even to meet uh, legally in times like this. And we realize that providentially you've put the equipment in place here that we can broadcast this message around planet earth at the time that it needs to be broadcast we praise you for that for your providential leading we ask that you help us to be faithful stewards of what you've given us to do this work with and faithful um, messengers of the word that you've given us to share and we thank you for these things in jesus name amen